would like to show you how to tie a flymph, and uh, this specific pattern happens to be one of Jonathan's favourites. He told me that when he visited uh, Rautas, a stream in the northern of Sweden, he had some excellent fishing with this fly on both uh, grayling and trout. It's a rather simple design. The tail is made from a few fibers of uh, CDC. The body is made from seal's fur dubbing in the color golden olive. And the hackle is made from a few good turns of partridge. So, we'll make a start. Start by attaching the thread to the hook. So, on our way down to the bend, we will tie in the tail. Rip off a few fibers from a CDC feather. You don't need very many. And tie them in. Like that. That's about the correct length. Then we can run it down all the way to the bend. And uh, we should uh, wax the silk as well. When you're handling seal's fur, it's a rather difficult uh, material to dub to the thread. In this specific case, since it's a flimp, I want uh, the body to be rather fluffy. So I will split this silk and uh, put uh, the seal's fur in the split silk. First I need to have the thread flat, then I need to pierce it with a needle. Mm, ah, I missed it. Let's see here. That's it. Like that. Seals first of course dubbing, so might be difficult to create a completely symmetric body with a nice taper to it, but you'll ha simply have to practice at that. There's nothing more to do. I think that's just about the right amount. You don't, you don't need very much of it. And when you have that, you can counter spin the bobbin to twist the silk together again. Twist it almost as much as possible. Of course not too much, so it breaks, but to really secure the seal fur fibers. What's so nice about seal's fur is that the fibers themselves have uh, a look almost like glass and when you make a body it gives this really you know succulent look. It's very buggy indeed and it has this transparency which is uh, quite difficult to match with any other natural material or synthetic for that part. And then we wind the body and as you see, it's a little spikier than some other bodies, and a little more sparse also. That's tif typical for flimps, although most traditional flimps are tied with a lot softer dubbing. That's about it. So now, check the body. In this case, I am a bit bothered by these longer fibers at the rear of the fly, so I, I find it I get the best, most natural looking result if I just rip them off. Eventually I could trim them with a scissors, but that shouldn't be too necessary. About like that. Then select a hackle feather. And uh, could be, most partridge hackles have fairly long fibers, but about a body length is sufficient for a flimph. Then you tie it in, and I always tie all my hackles really by letting the feather point towards the hook eye, then going back, securing the feather. I cut the stem off like that. And then I wind the hackle backwards, and I also make sure that uh, the thread is tightly spun. And what I'm going to do 
after that is to secure the hackle with the thread and go towards the hook eye. And you don't want many turns. Two turns is plenty. One and a half or something like that is preferable. Like that. So now we have secured the hackle. We can release the pliers. And then we go with as few turns of thread as possible towards the hook eye. And there we have it. If we are sure that the hackle is like we want it to be, we can cut the excess off. Like that. Eventually, you know, if you're using gossamer silk, which is uh, a rather thick thread, you might want to wax it. It really helps to make a neat head. So if there's no wax left on the silk, just wax it again. Perhaps you want to secure the hackle further by stroking it backwards and folding it down with a thread like that. And then I do my whip finish. One knot and two knots. Then you can cut the silk off. And that's the finished fly. Now I like to groom the hackle fibers, especially on these you know soft hackles. So I just stroke them backwards and I crush them somewhat with my fingers. And doing so I think give them you know like joints on the fibers that uh, helps them just somewhat to uh, move and uh, breathe in the water. But it might just be my imagination. I like the looks of it nonetheless. And if you want so, you could always pluck some fibers out with your dubbing needle. There, my friends, we have a real fish catcher.